Hey everyone, it's Dev here. Welcome to Dragon Front Rising Overview. I love me some post day releases, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's like it can be any day nowadays instead of just having a consistent schedule. I'm constantly switching between the opinion if we should have games come out throughout the whole week or in just one day like we used to. I mean, we're currently in the midst of the Project Madness and I don't know if it's gonna continue like that, though at least there's some stuff to play. A little bit too much, but it is what it is. <laughs> so Dragon Front Rising is a turn-based strategy card game where you take head-on opponents in a high fantasy World War II inspired battlefield filled with various monstrosities and anything in between. I love that for the whole trailer there's only like 10 seconds of footage available, so I don't even know if y'all will see it. I already played the game and it's kind of mixed on me. I'm a turn-based anything enthusiast, like that's my favorite genre. And in terms of that kind of strategy, cards and turn cards are currently my favorite that I just literally spam play every single day. Dragonfront has a kind of high-end graphics and visual art style. There's definitely a lot going on, like some stuff will be appearing when you'll be casting spells. Creatures are fully animated and they really have some unique models going on and they don't really repeat themselves. My main gripe is that the whole pacing seems a bit off or just too long, because I didn't even leave the first match of the tutorial and if I would continue then it might end after like 30 minutes of total play. So if that section takes so much time then I can only imagine what's happening in the normal matches. It's mostly because from the experience I had, up until you won't wipe out the whole board there's not much else to do. And the enemy has to pretty much run out of cards to not place their troops anymore. So that really doesn't entice me to play if I have to power through the whole decks of cards. Anything besides that I didn't really discover. Graphically in terms of the genre it's definitely the best best one out of there. It's just that I wish I would see more of the actual game rather than be stuck in one single tutorial match. <laughs> we'll see how the community will receive this. More turn-based stuff is always fine by me and it's not like the genre will get oversaturated because it's more complicated than doing a basic shooter game. <laughs> Let's go to the gameplay. Welcome traveler. I brought you here during the Second Great War. The Scale Forces are close to defeating the Eclipse Army at the Battle of Sorrow Ridge. You sit atop your stronghold. If it falls, Scales will lose the battle. Your stronghold's health can be tracked by viewing the red highlighted number on your gauntlet. Sitting before you is the enemy's stronghold. Use your army and raise it to the ground. Speaking of your army, let's look at your options. This is really high quality. I mean, maybe the terrain could be a bit better. But the models are pretty cool looking. <laughs> Open your hand using the buttons highlighted on your gauntlet. Oh. <laughs> From your gauntlet, your hand of cards will be projected for your viewing. These cards represent the units and spells currently at your disposal. Select this unit and place it in your spawn row, which is the row closest to your stronghold. Select the card with the green arrow. Everything is very shiny and stuff like that. I don't necessarily like that the models... They are from the same faction, but... They're not very much distinguishable from each other. But that's just like the design stuff. These units represent the backbone of your army. Their courage is truly inspiring. Now, let's pass the turn to your opponent. What's this theme though? Like... That foul creature will stop at nothing until every life is snuffed out. We'll need to prepare to face it. You gain mana at the start of your turn. It is used to spawn units, cast spells, and build fortifications. You gain one mana each turn, plus another for each unit in your spawn row. You can see your current mana on your gauntlet. 
Okay, but I want this to go away. Looks like you have the resources to place another unit in your spawn row. Place the unit where you wish before ending your turn. That target is not valid. I can't put them in front row for now. Let's make some the bones. unit you just summoned has a powerful ongoing effect. Take a closer look. Where's the button? I highly recommend you examine unfamiliar units to see what kind of unexpected effects they might have. Okay, so they would be better for them, I suppose? I don't like the whole cancellation and stuff. Making way. That enemy unit has an ability you've not Your seen yet. You should take a closer look. There's so much like effects going on. That's a lot of mana. Having units in your spawn row is the primary way to generate mana. Go ahead and place another unit in your spawn row. Ah, okay. If you'll notice, after playing that unit, you have some mana remaining. Not enough to cast or summon anything else this turn. You could keep the mana and use it next turn. But instead, let's devote it to your champion. Ah, so it doesn't, like, reset. Champions are battle-changing units that cost a lot of mana to summon. However, their cost goes down every time your stronghold takes damage. By devoting mana to your champion, you also reduce its cost. Uh-huh. Yes, my lord. When is the attacking happening? So many units. You must act quickly before you're overwhelmed. I think it's time you learned about spells. Spells can have a great variety of effects on the battlefield. This particular... Aha! Well, that went splendidly. As you can see, that spell did more damage than the enemy's remaining health. Uh, that's the number in the red shield, mind you. Let's now go on the offensive. When you activate a unit, it moves forward one tile if possible, and attacks any enemy unit directly in front of it. Excellent, sir. Your unit won. Excellent. Though they took some damage, your unit was victorious. I think it's time you brought out your champion. Hmm, we still need more mana to summon your champion. Did you know you can discard any card in your hand once per turn to gain one mana? It's a sacrifice to be sure, but one that can serve the greater good, if done at the right time. While examining a card, you may select the skull icon next to it to discard it. Chief Engineer! Excellent. In general, champions are very powerful and have strong abilities that turn the tide of a battle. Your champion gave you two fortifications. Fortifications are physical constructions that can be placed in any empty tile or allied control space in the front line. Let's place a fortification right now. There's <laughs> so much going on visually.
But for what? This enemy unit has a new ability. Examine it if you'd like to know more. Ready for orders. Boots on the field. All right, traveler. Seeing your progress so far, I trust in your abilities. The army is now yours to command. Trust your instincts and bring down the enemy stronghold. Remember, you can activate, spawn units, and place spells in any order as long as you can afford the cost. But how do you win? Like, I need to go there? Most units have a number of mana fragments. When a unit is destroyed, the owner receives mana into their pool equal to the fragments on it. Fine work, Commander. Let's get going. <laughs> I mean, I like those effects when you spawn something. And I assume it's better to have everyone or just something at least in the spawn points for more mana. But I don't necessarily like the fortification philosophy. Can I go side to side though? Ready for orders. Well. I just want to like find out the mechanics first. Oh, it's on their death. Okay. Must move units from your spawn row. Opportunity's knocking. At your commander. Fine work, commander. Oops. <laughs> No, 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 no. It calls that test. Blast! Your opponent has summoned their own champion, which floods the board with more enemy units. Rise from your graves. This spell can affect every unit in a single lane. Lanes run vertically across the battlefield, and rows run horizontally. So let's do this. May the Allfather watch after these souls in the next life. 
strategy worthy of a legendary general. I'm trying to think about the philosophy overall with the mechanics and proper strategies. There's definitely like a ton of stuff going on. A lot of information to take in. A building? Your spawn row is full. Rally to me! I can't place them there. <laughs> sure. And quite resilient. Take a closer look if you'd like to learn more. You cannot move a unit with summoning sickness. This will block them. Need something. So it's just like a field. Trying to get to the base. We serve. It's like impossible up until he won't run of cards. So the matches can just go in infinity. I think this is the number of cards. Yeah, it's like... You 
must wait a turn before giving that unit orders. And I have to finish here, like, it's so much that I don't know if that's a good thing, really. And I didn't even see anything else besides this whole tutorial match. From the technicalities, I like the overall art style. The models look high quality as well, and the battlefield effects, like, it's very much immersive. There's a lot of information and mechanics to discover. Which is pretty much a standard in entering a new card strategy game. Correlating mechanics depending on the faction. I think the health points and attack is self-explanatory. I just don't like that the matches can go in infinity up until you run out of cards. Like, I don't know if I like that part of the game cause they didn't even hit his home base, but there's so much going on anyway, so I don't know what to really think about, but besides that, it seems pretty solid. It's just that you need to sacrifice a lot of time to really understand what's happening. <laughs>